Drinking shit. The podcast where we drink shit and we talk shit about brew of, and yeah. all sorts of shit. All sorts of shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we got lots of fun stuff to talk about uh, on this episode, but before we get into that, we need something to sip on while we talk shit. Cleanse the palate, get us primed. That's right. Get the cannon primed, Captain. So, uh, Mr. Bones, why don't you uh, tell us what we have uh, this week? Today we have a cider. We've been doing rums and whiskeys, but this time, let's go around cider. This is Kelt, Thirsty Warrior. Now, I was looking at the lettering, and I thought it was Christy Warren. I thought a chick drink. I'm like, okay, all right. But no, it's Kelt, Thirsty Warrior. The Thirsty Warrior. So if you're a warrior and you're thirsty... And you want something from Brittany, uh, made in France, uh, get yourself this. So, shall we give it a go? Yeah, and but, you know, this is supposed to be, a t- so it's made in France, but it's actually uh, supposed to be about Viking Celtic warriors, which is right up our alley. So, we thought what would be uh, appropriate for, for to sip on something like this is to drink out of our Viking drinking horns. Wow, we're doing these. All right. Yeah. At least for this. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we play pirate festivals. We play Viking festivals. We play all sorts of stuff. We have a, Vi- a Viking in the band, so we are not, uh, you know, we are well versed on the Viking drinking horn. So. Not opposed to being, getting horny here. And, you know, my, mine's a little bit bigger than yours. Yeah, well, I, 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 I'm just going to leave it there. I le- the captain gets the longer <laughs> horn. <laughs> Grower, not a shower. Cheers. Cheers. Check this right. out. All right. It's the problem with the big horn. You get through the glass pretty quick. You do. Oh, I'm going to love this. So the last drinks we had were beers. Now... I'll say this is made from a hundred percent fermented apples. So a lot of other uh, uh, ciders and whatnot, they'll mix apples with pears and or they'll put a, you know things to kind of thin it out a little bit. This is a hundred percent fermented apples. Yeah, and they'll rush the the ferment process, and it'll taste like candy. It won't have this very um, dry, almost champagne like. I mean, you really smell the apples, I. And, and it's like a, a champagne, champagne with, yeah. with, with apples. Yeah. So it's like uh, the French uh, sec, which means kind of dry. Ah. Shall we? <laughs> he speaks French. Look I, at that. Only today when I drink. <laughs> Cheers. I, I speak all sorts of languages when I'm drunk. Oh, skull. 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 Wow. It, you know, it's really... Uh, very mature taste for a cider. It has a lot of uh, complex flavors in there. Uh, I would say it's kind of woody. Like you get like, I I don't know if they aged it in barrels or whatnot, but it kind of has that flavor to it. Yeah, I so I'm tasting a little bit of uh, ap- dried apricots and maybe some raisin in there. Yeah, I get a little bit of the raisin too. You can taste kind of a little bit of the... Yeah, especially on the back end. Mm. You get it. It's light, so it's not very sweet. Yeah, it's not overly sweet. I mean, that's a complaint of a lot of people is they don't like ciders because they're too sweet. But this, this is for you out there who who want a, more of a dry, less sweet uh, cider. This is really good. Yeah, and this is pretty smooth, so you know you could you could take your time with it. You don't have to shoot it back. If you're a fan of like Magner cider, you'll be a fan of this. Right. Uh, we did, we did another cider, cider uh, Gowan. Uh, Gowan, yeah. Gowan. And that, it, that was really good. That was really good. It's a little bit more to the not as sweet side as the Gowan. But this, yeah. this is good. I would, it is. Yeah. So where would you drink this? On the ship or off in shore? Uh, it would be a good drink for, for either or there. Right. I would say. I could see myself on the side of, uh, let's say, uh, on a sandy beach uh, with a wench. And some cheeses. 
<laughs> it might be the French in there that makes me want to do that. A baguette and a broadsword. That sounds like a good day. You gotta have something to cut the cheese with. <laughs> so, on that note, uh, I figured we'd get into some uh, some of our talking points for today. Right. I kind of wanted to get into a uh, little bit of paranormal mytho- mythological talk here. Right. Right. I I uh, I've really been researching lately uh, the mythical creatures of the Kelpies, which I don't know if uh, how many of you out there know or have heard of a Kelpie, but it's basically a water spirit that takes form of a water horse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I remember something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the really cool thing about it, I, I'll get into a little bit more of the stories about it, but uh, a lot of Scottish people in Scotland actually believe that Loch Ness monster is actually a kelpie. That big old log in the in the river is actually a kelpie, <laughs> <laughs> or an eel. I've heard that's the the modern scientific an eel, theory, a bunch of logs eels. tied together. You know, I I'm I'm with the kelpie. Yeah, I I think it would be cool to have an. It would explain a lot. Explain why you can't find it because one of the the really cool thing of things about kelpies are they they are shapeshifters. Hmm. So they can actually, uh, you know, if, if you're chasing one, they can just turn into something else. See, that explains why all these scientists are looking for a seahorse, a dinosaur, a yeah. log. If it can shapeshift, you're looking for a log, it's going to be a seal or whatever it wants to be, right? Exactly. So what does it come make itself into? So it, it it's uh, known, well, I'll tell you a little story here. Mm. So uh, it's known for taking the shape of, like, a really handsome, uh, and this is right up your alley, right? handsome fiddle player. All right, that, one of mine. Yeah, has, fiddle you may or may not know, Mr. Bones is our fiddle player. And, and might have a little Kelpie in me. So, <laughs> he yeah. might, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, it, yeah, so uh, it, there's a story of a, of, a, of a young maiden who went down to the water and she heard fiddle music playing. Right. And so she wants to uh, uh, find out where the fiddle play in music, fiddle music that, she, you know, she's never heard before. That's the most beautiful music she's ever heard. So she comes down to the dock and she sees a very striking, handsome gentleman playing fiddle. He has seaweed in his hair, which wow. is uh, <laughs> what they say usually they'll have seaweed in their hair. But other than that, he's dressed very finely for the time and right. playing his fiddle. And he, he uh, motions her to come down to, to come hear the, uh, the music. So she, she makes her way down, not thinking anything of it, thinking some guy just is down at the dock playing some fiddle. And uh, so she goes down there, and uh, she, he's playing a, a real sad tune, you know, real uh, melancholy, and he, he starts to cry. And he he nods to her to, like, wipe, wipe the tears from his cheek. So she goes to wipe the tear from his cheek, and the second she touches him, if you touch a Kelpie, you are immediately entranced. They have you in their, their hold. And so the second he touches her, now... Now she's his. And then he steps back into the water and transforms into a water horse and beckons her to climb on and to go for a ride. But when, when she does that, once you, once you get on a, 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 water, a water horse, a kelpie, you can't get off. No. You're, you're stuck. You're stuck. You're stuck. And then they'll take you into the depths, and that's the last you'll be heard of. Pretty much you become fish food. Basically. Kelpie food. Yeah, you're Kelpie food at nice. that point. Nice. Yeah. So uh, that's predominantly what they, how they kind of take their shapes, but they've been known to take shapes of uh, maidens as well. But for some reason, they, they tend to go for more of the masculine thing. So it's, right. like, it's almost like a, 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 a male mermaid. You know, uh, a kelp maid, a mer, mer- kelper, yeah, kelper something maid. like that. Yeah, 
<laughs> Either way, I wouldn't want to meet one, you know. Yeah, it's hard to break away from the fiddle for that. I mean, you know, you're seducing and you're, you're, you turn into a horse and you see. It sounds like a pretty good night for a fiddle player, you know. And that it does. It's in a Celtic pirate band. I don't know. You, well, you would know more than us. Because so. <laughs> usually they go after uh, the captain. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, they all want the fiddle players. <laughs> they I, all want the fiddle I think players. it's the Kelpie. I think it's the Kelpie. And, and all, like you're entrancing them in your, yeah. your, your love spell. Yeah. <laughs> so if you if you're a fiddle player in a Celtic pirate band, carry a little seaweed in your hair and, and just play along. Maybe that should be a new addition to your your <laughs> your get up. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just gonna sh practice shedding tears and, and dragging people to their deaths. <laughs> 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 or at least get them blacked Cheers out. To that. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. So, Mr. Bones, you have any? Uh, Stories of the paranormal to dish out this this episode. I do. I I was doing a little trolling on the uh, on YouTube. Um, so yeah, check out our websites, our our podcast on YouTube. This one is about uh, there, there's that movie Christine, which is oh yeah, you know this young geek. Uh, a big Stephen King. Person. Yeah, if you love Stephen King, this is the way to go. Definitely go out if you haven't seen it. Uh, so this young geek guy. Uh, he, he, he's kind of being pushed around by people. Anyway, long story short, he finds this possessed car that belonged to a guy that died in it or something like that. And uh, he builds awesome it up. Awesome old muscle car. Oh, it's great. It's red. Uh, and it, it goes around killing all his bullies. And then yep. in the end, it wants its soul, his soul. And in, in the, Well, I won't spoil or uh, give you a spoiler on it. But there is actually, it's based on a story of a cop car that was in the 60s or in the 70s. Uh, so this, this uh, police station bought a cop car, and all these guys were like, wow, cool. I want to drive it. First guy that drives it goes mad and kills his family and kills himself. Wow. So you're thinking, okay, well, it happens. Then another guy wants it. He gets in it. He drives it, and the same thing happens. Wow. So it ends up killing three cops before the, the agents. The, and their families. And right? their family. And the police station eventually says, you know what? we got to get rid of this. It's cursed. So it happens that in this town, there's a gal that's a witch, a Wiccan. And no one wants to buy this car. She goes, I'll take it. So she ends up buying it. And anytime someone gives her, gives her grief, someone gets hurt. Or someone, you know, disappears or something like that. You don't want to cross the Wiccan. You want to cross it. So eventually the town gets scared of this car and they steal it from her. And they part it out. And this is where I think Stephen King picks up the story, where they part it out and throw in different uh, uh, junkyards. And uh, eventually, uh, you know, she eventually gets it all back. Not before it, like, I, I guess she eventually starts herself on fire because I guess the car told her to or something. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I think this car eventually got crushed, but before that, all these parts. You know, were possessed and 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 just like in Christine, you put them together and they become evil again. Wow, I had no idea that, that was based off a true, uh, true story, true true ghost story. That's uh, crazy. Now I, there is another story if you want uh, the James Dean story. Let's hear it. Yeah. So the, we're going with ships and and and, and motor vehicles. Well, you know, they're 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 land but land boats. the boats of the of the land there. And there are there are possessed. Pirate ships. We'll go into it in other other stories, but this I guess we'll go with land ships, which are more more uh, familiar. The car that James Dean rode was named Little Bastard. Right. And uh, he obviously everyone knows the story. He was on a road in California, pulled out into the left lane, and, and got hammered by a bigger car. Uh, so he dies, and the car gets uh, gets you know towed away and uh, eventually gets sold. Right. So someone buys this car and they're thinking, yeah, all right, I, I can I can sell it uh, as a kind of a macabre uh, display. And um, so eventually the guy doesn't make any money off it uh, and he starts selling parts off. So he sells off the engine and the transmission to two different guys that race this. And lo and behold, one of the drivers wrecks and dies a horrible death. And then the other guy who had the transmission 
gets horribly injured and and you know it's just pretty much yeah uh, vegetable wow so, so we're saying possession of cars eventually the guy starts selling parts off and he you think he would have stopped it's like he's he's killing people off um so he sells the tires the wheels to this one guy loads them in the car and everything and then they blow up <laughs> But the, the tires blow the up. Tires, uh, the tires all blow For up. For no like, reason. No reason at all. So Wow. So the story goes that this the little bastard, which was the name of the car. I guess new meaning to Hot Wheels. Uh, yeah. <laughs> was pretty much uh, possessed and was killing people all the way through. That'll make you think twice about going to your uh, local used car dealership and test driving cars in the future, right? I'd say yeah, definitely get get not only get a check on on the history of the car, but maybe bring someone that knows about ghosts. Bring a priest. Bring a priest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I'll test drive this car, but I have to have my friend exercise it first. Now I, I've had cars that have been possessed, but they haven't killed anyone. They've killed themselves. So. <laughs> That's called a lemon. Yeah, because I you know maybe because I possess you know I cried a little bit and it touched me and I brought it down to the depths of its um, <laughs> soul. Oh, <laughs> you kelpied it. I kelpied it. I've I've kelpied two cars, so <laughs> you don't. Maybe you shouldn't drive the bus anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as I don't own them, I think is the is the rule. Oh, okay. And I don't cry in them. <laughs> Hopefully not. No, no, I have not. I have not cried in. Them. <laughs> so we probably will do a podcast on on our bus, uh, which is named. Yeah, in the future. You've named her, right? Well, we're it's still for debates. I say, the Black Pearl. I and and our bass player is all about the Blunder Bus. Right. I mean, I have, I have, I, I have hey, my name. If well, well, what's your name? I call it the Splinter. The Splinter. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Uh, Below in the comments, uh, comment on your, your favorite name. Do you like the Black Pearl? Because it's all black. That's why I say the Black Pearl. The Blunderbuss, for obvious reasons. Or the Splinter, which, which whatever that means. That, that one's not going to win, but I, I just have, have had that experience with it. <laughs> comment below. And, uh, you know, the most uh, comments I think will we'll go with. For the name. I'll be naughty. I've, I've been in the bus, and because of a splinter, I, it's been in me. So we, we share a bond. I don't want to see you making a bunch of fake accounts <laughs> and going on there and putting splinter. Uh, <laughs> get no splinters, you make a ship. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I think we're going to uh, take a quick break, come back, and do a tasting, uh, another tasting here. We got more. All right. We got more. Lots more. Stick around. The captain provides. Drunken Pirates. Drunken Cheers. Pirates. Welcome back to Drunken Pirates Drinking Shit. We have a real treat for you this week. We have, uh, we, we, about two weeks ago, we played a show at the one and only, the world famous. World is famous. It, the, uh, the one and only Dark Heart, Heart Brewery. Brewery. Sacramento, California. Sacramento, California. And uh, this place is a pirate-themed uh, brewery, and it's amazing. So not only are is everyone, I can't say enough about the, the people who run it. Right. Um, you know, they're amazing, which uh, we're, I did an interview with them, which we'll show after this segment, um, uh, with the owners of uh, Dark Heart. Uh, but the the brew they make is out of this world. And, I mean, you know, we, yeah. we drink a lot of beer. <laughs> and the, their beer is is really uh, high quality, right. great flavors. They got a little bit of everything for everyone. So, yeah. you know, it's a wide array of beers. So Yeah, we play, um, and the show we played there was awesome. We, I mean, there was... I'd say what, like over two hundred people, right? Probably around that, and uh, yeah, everyone was awesome, really into it. Um, you know, the staff there is friendly, and you know, they'll answer any questions you have. And uh, so I, I, I'll jump in here. So the place is set; just it's one of the better breweries in terms of ambiance. It's a giant 
warehouse and it has all the vibe of a great brew pub but also has a great feel of a pirate den yeah uh, they have a great outdoor patio so if you're not an indoor person you could sit outside heaters the whole heaters yeah be out in the open deal. look at the stars while you drink some of the best beer in sacramento it also has a great indoor with couches and things like that so it, you can bring your family and have a good time, but if you if you want, you can come in, dress as pirate, and no one will give you any problems. Yeah, they encourage uh, pirate dress and pirate talk there for sure. And uh, not only that, they, they have great uh, caterers that come and food trucks and, and different caterers that come. The night we played, they had, uh, you know, fair style food. I had uh, a, 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 a turkey leg right. that normally you get at a fair. It was like being at a fair without all the craziness of a fair. So. I think what was special about that night, the show we did, uh, the, the whole night opened out with an actual cannon. Yeah, they shot, shot off a cannon. So all props to the pirates that brought the cannon. Yep. Uh, we had our own personal cannon that we used, but theirs was by far the best. Well, yeah, theirs is a real cannon. <laughs> Ours is a CO2 cannon, so there's a difference. But, um, you know, we, we brought out our whole... Our whole yeah. show for that, our you know, we brought out everything, all our props, everything for that show. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and um, <laughs> one of the great things was uh, our uh, lead guitarist went up to order a beer, and the bartender says, "You know, you guys haven't been drinking enough. You need to drink more. I'm looking at your tab here. You need more." And uh, so they just kept, uh, you know, well, what else can we get to you? What What do you want? And um, it, it was it was. Really cool, great yeah. hospitality. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it is it is the modern day kind of pirate get together. Yeah, and uh, the owners of Dark Heart were nice enough to uh, furnish us with this growler of their anniversary um, barley wine, which is eleven eleven point five percent by alcohol, and it's uh, so it's it's a barley wine. It's it's really. Uh, uh, up there, but um, we have not tried this. I yeah. tried, I tried their uh, Irish Red Ale, and I tried their Wee Heavy, which was their Scottish Ale, and both of them were amazing. If you like either Reds or uh, Scott or Scottish Ales, you need you owe it to yourself to uh, try uh, Dark Heart Brewing. I know they deliver within Sacramento. Sacramento, right? I don't think they ship, but I could be wrong. You can. Go on their website, which we'll have uh, a link to below, and uh, you know maybe email and see if they'll ship. But if you're in the Sacramento area, you need to stop at this brewery. On your way to Tahoe, just make a beeline off the highway. You're only about uh, what five minutes off the highway, and to get some of the best brew, get yourself a growler and then go skiing. You know? Yeah, they sell cans too. They, they sell do. cans, yeah. growlers. I think mini growlers. Um, they saw all, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, so it's what they've had. This is their one-year anniversary. Yeah, and this is their anniversary barley wine that they did just for their anniversary. Now, I'm going to jump in before we get to the review, but we did a show in February. This, I mean, this is how lucky we are. We did a show in February on the 21st, and then all hell broke loose. Uh, <laughs> and then we did a show in November on the 21st. So we were there for their... Literally, the only shows we, <laughs> we played in 2020 we played two shows, and they were both at Dark Heart Brewery. But I think it, it, out of all the shows, this is, if we had played all the shows, I, for a small venue that had a pirate theme and a pirate culture, this is one of the better venues. Uh, it was one of the best shows we've done. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I guess we did do some private parties in there. But still, that, yeah. they were our, basically our first and last shows of 2020. There are bookends, the yeah. fore and aft, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but I would get, play there every week if I could because yeah. they're that cool. Well, let's open this up while we have a yep. chance. All right. First, I'm going to pour one for the camera here. And uh, real quick uh, yeah. about our uh, mugs, if you can see this uh, this pirate mug here that we have. This was hand etched by our one and only uh, Bloodbeard. Bloodbeard, okay. Yeah, uh, he... He hand etched, uh, I think, about twelve of these for us, um, and so you can get one. Uh, I'll leave a link to our website below, or, or my email actually. You can email me if you'd like one. Um, I think they're going for, uh, I think, forty dollars. 
That seems about right. It, yeah. d- double check. We'll, 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 we'll. And then plus uh, plus shipping, which depending on where you're you're coming from, uh, I'll let you know the shipping. Uh, but they're uh, hand etched, and they are. Um, it says it has our O'Craven logo on the front there, and on the back side it says O'Craven little uh, devil cross and bone that says Devil's Drink for one of our songs, and uh, they're high quality here. So they're limited edition. I think yeah, they'll probably redo edition. them different one every year. So this is for for 2020. Uh, yeah. If you want one, definitely hit us up. Uh, they hold beer. They hold, uh, well, if you want to fill it with whiskey to the top, that's up to you, but that's, that's pushing it. It's my Friday night. <laughs> so Bloodbeard is our lead guitarist. If you've heard some of his stuff, he's fantastic. This next year we'll be recording, and Bloodbeard has some excellent solos in there. Um, I know we haven't pushed out anything yet, but um, this... This uh, crew, particular crew, has uh, a, wh- a whole array of extra skills and things we do uh, when not sailing or pirating or playing music. Yeah, we all do something around here. But uh, I got to give it to Bloodbeard. I did not know, aside from pillaging and uh, carrying a mean axe. Uh, He's actually catches. a really good artist. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, He did a shirt design for us. Um, between him and I, we, we k- take care of most of the art. Um and then, uh, but but yeah, he's a really good artist, and uh, he did these uh, glass etching here. Uh, All right. So this, you can get a growler with the logo on it. We did. We think it's a great logo. I've got their T-shirt. You could buy their merch as well. Uh, definitely, their shirts are great. The brown with the orange. Uh, if I wasn't wearing my traditional pirate gear, I would have worn the shirt. Uh, oh. But oh yeah, you are wearing a shirt. You're, I am wearing the. You can show them the back, yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you can get it in the camera there, but yeah. never turn your back on someone, but only when you show your dark heart shirt. And uh, I just want to say here, look at the color on this on this beer. I mean, look at that caramel color. That's, that's good. That's yeah. a beautiful thing right there. So yeah, so let's uh, let's give a, a, a cheers to the one cheers. year for dark heart, and let's test this growl. Happy anniversary, dark heart. Happy anniversary. Smells sweet, like the initial nose is is sweet, kind of caramel. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I would. Oh my God. Yeah, I would, that's good. I would I would eat a big piece of mutton and or some barbecue with this. No light meal, just like something big and heavy, smoky. I, and for something with eleven point five percent alcohol, you expect it to be like really alcohol. Yeah, or yeah, super uh, sweet. Yeah, or yeah, and this sour. This is not. It's. It's really well balanced. Wow, this this is great. Yeah, I mean, I can see 11% you want to sip this through, but you, you can take a good mouthful of it and really... I get like caramel and butter and like oak. I, I'm, I'm particular. I rate it by pancakes. I would put this on pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has that sweet, maple-y type of uh, feel to it. Yeah. Yeah, maple, definitely maple in there. Uh, if you want texture, maybe a little bit of a leather, but definitely this this really sweet, well-balanced, very complex flavor palette in it. Yeah, yeah, really well-balanced. Um, they, they do some amazing things. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> we gotta... We gotta Slow motion. Slow motion. Right there. <laughs> uh... I mean, okay, we're trying to keep this interview going here, but it's so good that literally our silence should give volumes on how good this is. I want to freeze it and ice skate on it and then <laughs> melt it in the summer and then drink it again. Okay, I mean, it's romantic, but I want to sail it into a sunset and uh, give it one rose and play fiddle for it. Man, that's good. That is good. Um like I said, we have an interview coming up with the owners, and uh, it not one. I will preface the the interview by saying that uh, it was super noisy. We had just finished our show there; the bar was still going crazy, and it was very, very noisy. There was nowhere to do an interview without having a bunch of noise. So 
we did the interview. Uh, I'm going to subtitle the interview, so uh, hopefully you can understand it, but if you can't, you can read the subtitles below. It's a very successful place. I know that night it was so well well visited that it was hard to get anywhere in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, everyone, everyone was kind of keeping their spacing, but it was a line that was a long line. Luckily, as a pirate performing, you get privilege, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's worth it was would be worth the wait. Quick little story. I think I, I we pissed off a bunch of people in there because we went up to get beer after our show, and we were standing in this huge long line that went out, out the door and everything. And one of the bartenders saw us and came up, and right before they came up, we were just talking to some people in line about how bad the line was because it, it was long. We're all like, but it's worth it to get you know the beer, and. Uh, then the bartender pops up and goes, oh, performers don't have to stay in line, and dragged us up to the, to the front of the bar, and I, I think we pissed off a bunch of people. You know what? I, I think they got over it once they got their beer. I would, yeah. I would have forgiven anything after I got, like, a scotch ale. Uh, I, yeah, I would have gladly stood in line for, for this beer here. I mean, you know, I'd wait. For a half hour to get the stuff. <laughs> I know, I know they do in some other parts of California when when they do uh, uh, kind of they abuse the beers. But I, I mean, on, all honesty, the the full range of beers is unbelievable. So there's a beer for every pirate there. Pirate wench, scallywag. There's a beer. for They you. even do uh, their own custom. Si uh, I'm sorry. Um, what do they call them? Like a lemonade or a, a, a seltzer? Seltzer. There's seltzer. They do their own custom seltzer, which is actually good because our uh, our drummer, Cerebus uh, the Faceless. Cerebus <laughs> the Faceless. <laughs> uh, he uh, he actually can't really do beer once in a while, but uh, he has a dietary thing where he can't do beer. But he loves seltzers, and they had seltzers there, and they have a really wide variety. They mix it themselves, mix in the seltzer, and uh, they were really good, really good. I, I tried a, a couple of right. flavors of those, and those were really good. Right. Well, they got something for everybody. So, yeah, don't don't hesitate to drop in on your way to Tahoe, or you're coming back from Tahoe and they're open. Drop in, get yourself something to go home. Now, we hope they go into Hell, wider distribution. Yeah, I, I hope that, too. And I, uh, I don't know if I asked the owners about it when I interviewed them, but... Um, that that is something that we, we're actually thinking about going back up there uh, when we're not playing a show and doing a flight of beers and doing a tasting for you guys and showing all the different beers. Right. So that that may come in a few future episode there. Um, but uh, at that time, I'll I'll ask them if they have any plans on uh, expanding because it would be really right. nice if they uh, or at least shipped. Um, right. To other areas in California, I know there might be stuff about shipping over state lines they can't do, but uh, it would be great if you could order right. some of this liquid gold here. So I, I challenge all the scallywags out there, wenches and others, definitely seek out uh, this brew and then ask your local uh, distributor to carry this. It supports pirate culture. It supports yeah. commerce. In, in these times, it's hard to keep a brewery open, but it's hard to keep a pirate brewery open. So if you, believe, harder. If you believe in the cause, definitely. Yeah, if, if you're into the pirate lifestyle, pirate music, pirate anything, or, or beer, and breweries and local, local businesses uh, ran by great people, then support. Go out and support. Um, I would say this is definitely worth, even if you're, like... We live, what, about three hours away from there? About three. And uh, I would take a day trip out there just to get their beer. Yeah, yeah, because it's a good environment. They're really cool people. And you can do some shopping there. Some, <laughs> there's some stuff to buy there. So Yeah, they have uh, some really cool uh, merchandise and all that. Right. So, yeah, if you support pirate culture and you like brew, if you really like brew, definitely go out, look at them, see what you can do to support them. If they have them, you know, wherever it is, uh, Let's get them. Let's get them to the next year in wide distribution in Northern California. That's right. Uh, I'd love to see them at a festival. This would be a great brew at a festival. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They would clean up. I mean, it would, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know, maybe they could substitute something that, that that's kind of old and bring in this good new brew. Right. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers to, to Dark Heart. Dark Heart. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Cheers. See you next year. 
we drink and we fight and we fight and we drink. Drink and we fight. Well, I'm here with Ricky and Cynthia Lee of Dark Art Road, who we are going to be doing a tasting of and uh, uh, giving our opinion of uh, their amazing brew. Um, but I just wanted to give a quick interview with uh, both of these uh, amazing people and this amazing brewery. Um, we just finished uh, playing here uh, tonight, and uh, I thought it would be it's a good time to uh, talk to them and find out a little bit more about Dark Art Brew. Uh, so, uh, you guys, I wanted to find out, like, uh, how did you come up with the name of Dark Art Brew? So, Dark Art comes from each person who has unfulfilled desires and dreams in the darkest parts of the world. And so, we wanted to bring out the whole knowledge of this is our dream. That kind of leads into my next question is, how did you guys get started in the room? I fell in love with that beer a long, long time ago. I learned how to brew it somewhat. Once I learned how the basics went, then I just took it off and I wanted to make it. 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 So I just delved into it for a while. Anyway, that's good for all the other things. Well, thank you for having us. And you really did a good job, too. Thank you. I mean, you know, we put a lot of a lot of bars and a lot of breweries we play a lot of different places and we just have a lot of fun and it's always fun to play with you guys and it's good to have you guys here and uh, we're very excited to be here with you guys and uh, you know we just want to thank you for having us and uh, yeah I am drinking a Wee Heavy right now which is an amazing scotch ale and it's smooth as hell it has flavor and body, but it doesn't have that fight sometimes that you get on some like kind of lower end that So it's really, really good. Yeah, definitely uh, have to to you. Thank you very much. Cheers. 
Welcome back. Cheers. Cheers. And now it's time for Pirate Facts. Pirate Facts. Which you might ask, why am I... Did that just appear there? It just appeared. That's magical. Um, it, I think it accents my outfit. I, 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 nice, it, right? Well, it brings out your eyes. The shininess in his eye. Right? Takes away that death stare. It gives me a little something extra. Uh, well, the what, re what do you have there? What I have is an earring, probably way too large for what an actual pirate would wear, but I don't own a lot of earrings anymore, and uh, I borrowed these from my lovely fiance. Um, and uh, congratulations! Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so she lent me her her hoop earrings here. Now, um, you might want to say, why am I why am I talking about earrings? All right. Well. Uh, earrings were a very in big part of pirate life. So uh, a lot of people don't know is that the earring was a functional, uh, almost appendage of the pirate. They, they used it for a couple different reasons. What they would do is, <laughs> as you, you can eat through it, you can eat through it. That's, uh, that's one thing. Uh, no, they would uh, actually put a glob of wax on the earring, a big glob of wax. Right. And so when they went into battle and they were going to start firing off cannons, they would take the wax off and stick it in their ears so they didn't go deaf from all the, uh, you know, explosions going off, which a lot of pirates would go deaf if they didn't do that. Fashion and function. Yeah. Yep. And then not only that, but the other big thing that the earring was used for was it, it was usually gold or sometimes silver, but usually a gold earring, an actual, you know, 24 karat pure, whatever, gold earring. And they would have that for, um, if they died. Right. And you didn't have an earring, you would just get tossed into oh, the locker, oh, to Davy Jones' locker, <laughs> to be fish food. Because uh, nobody else is paying for your funeral in those days. That's not good. But if you had a gold earring... They would take the earring, melt it down, and that would be your funeral cost. So they would pay for your for your coffin and funeral. Yeah. So they would they would uh, take you back to sh to shore, and they would uh, hand you over to a undertaker, and they would uh, give them the earring. They would melt it down, and then the undertaker would give you a proper burial. So everything had its its function. I mean, you. Yeah. Like, uh, there's something called the fiddle green, so if, uh, uh, or compensation. It's very practical sorts of pirates that we are. You know, if you injured yourself, you'd get part of your pay, or I think your widow would get something. Yeah, it, no, they actually had, uh, part of the pirate code was they had uh, things set up to that. So if you lost a limb, you got so much money. If you lost a, uh, an eye, you got so much money. If you died, you're with, you're, you know, and you had a family, they got so much money. So, you know, as, as, as uh, rough and tumble as we are and as, as rogue as we're known, we take care of our own. So I guess the, we take care of ourselves through the earring <laughs> if we die. One of the other things about the earring, well, you know, it was, uh, and I don't know if the, maybe this was more on the English ships or, or not, but uh, if you were out there uh, for, you know, months and months at end, uh, Sometimes, you know, hmm. love blossoms everywhere. Hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, there's no women on board, so there, you know, some some stuff went down. And one uh, one of the traditions was the, uh, you know, they would swap earrings, and a lot of times they would have the the name of their their uh, significant other engraved in the earring, and they would swap earrings. Wow, man. So you, I'm not giving you my earring. No, no, no I'm holding on to mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is later. I, I'm married to Ch China. Yeah. Yeah. My relationship is with China. She's <laughs> a hoe because <laughs> that's mine too. Well, I sent her my earring, so I guess we got the same gal. <laughs> I think that's another thing. It's syphilis for piracy. But anyway. Oh, yeah. That's all another story. So you're, you're using this as a, a kind of a marker for saying, hey, I'm with you, you're with me, I guess. Kind you're, of, basically. You're saying the yeah. pirate bond. Yeah, basically. Such a fraternal order. And if you had that earring from the other person and they died, then you got the money from, from that. 
you know, we're, we're just romantics as pirates is what it is. I guess. I'm, I just go I'm not at, that romantic. We'll apparently. look at the camera and say, we're romantics as pirates. Oh, you, you can be romantic. I'll be I'm, romantic. I'm all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is there any component to the earring? I know, I know for, for chains... Uh, you would break off a link of the chain and use it as currency. Your chain was right. like your credit card. Yep, basically. And, yeah. Uh, not for the earring. That was specifically uh, usually saved uh, for, for uh, uh, you know, burial costs. Right. So if you see, you know, all uh, your movie pirates and they have a gold earring, they're just taking care of their funeral costs and maybe uh, kind of con making sure they have a connection to someone else. Exactly. So that's that's the pirate earring, and that is pirate facts. Pirate facts. Cheers. Cheers. I'm betrothed to my drink. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can be down with that one. There you are. That's what we share. We're we're related to our drink. Sailor man, sail to the pit of hell.